Hey there, AYP crew, and thank you for joining me here again. Um, just wanted to start off by apologizing for not posting any videos last week. Um, I explained in my video on Monday why that was, um, but for whatever reason, the audio file got corrupted, and I lost all the audio for that video. Um, didn't realize it until after it was published. Uh, thank you to the person who pointed it out to me. I appreciate that. Um, God willing, I'm going to re-record that video on uh, for Friday and, and publish it then. Um, but for now, let's just get back to the poetry. Um, tonight I wanted to read you some selections from Robert Frost. Um, they all have a particular uh, theme and tone. Um, let's see if you can figure it out for yourself. The first poem is called Hyla Brook. By June our brooks run out of song and speed. Sought for much after that it will be found, either to have gone groping underground, and taken with it all the Hyla breed that shouted in the mist a month ago, like a ghost of sleigh bells and a ghost of snow, or flourished and come up in jeweled weed. Weak foliage that is blown upon and bent, even against the way its waters went. Its bed is left a faded paper sheet of dead leaves stuck together by the heat. A brook to none but who remember long. This, as it will be seen, is other far. Then with brooks taken otherwhere in song, we love the things we love for what they are. Next poem is called West Running Brook. This one's a bit longer. Um, I like this particular poem because it's a conversation between uh, a couple of people. Um, you'll, you'll see. West Running Brook. Fred, where is North? North? North is there, my love. The brook runs west. West Running Brook, then call it. West running brook, men call it to this day. What does it think it's doing running west when all the other country brooks flow east to reach the ocean? It must be the brook can trust itself to go by contraries the way I can with you and you with me because we're, we're, I don't know what we are. What are we? Young or new? We must be something. We've said we two, let's change that to we three. As you and I are married to each other, we'll both be married to the brook. We'll build our bridge across it, and the bridge shall be. Our arm thrown over it, asleep beside it. Look, look, it's waving to us with a wave to let us know it hears me. Why, my dear, that wave's been standing off this jet of shore the black stream catching on a sunken rock, flung backward on itself in one white wave, and the white water rode the black forever, not gaining but not losing like a bird. White feathers from the struggle of whose breast flecked the dark stream and flecked the darker pool, below the point and were at last driven wrinkled in a white scarf against the far shore alders. That way has been standing off this jut of shore ever since rivers, I was going to say, were made in heaven. It wasn't waved to us. It wasn't, yet it was. If not to you, it was to me, in an enunciation. Oh, if you'd take it off to Ladyland, as t'were the country of the Amazons, we men must see you to the confines of and leave you there ourselves forbid to enter it is your brook i have no more to say yes you have to go on you thought of something speaking of contraries see how the brook and that white wave runs counter to itself it is from that in water we were from long long before we were from any creature here we and our impatience of the steps get back to the beginning of beginnings 
the stream of everything that runs away. Some say existence like a pirouette, and pirouette forever in one place. Stands still and dances, but it runs away. It seriously, sadly, runs away. To fill the abyss's void with emptiness. It flows beside us in this water brook, but it flows over us. It flows between us to separate us for a panic moment. It flows between us, over us, and with us. And it's time, strength, tone, light, life, and love, and even substance lapsing unsubstantial. The universal cataract of death that spends to nothingness and unresisted, save by some strange resistance in itself, not just a swerving, but a throwing back, as if regret were in it and were sacred. It has this throwing backward on itself, so that the fall of most of it is always raising a little, sending up a little. Our life runs down in sending up the clock. The brook runs down in sending up our life. The sun runs down in, speed, in sending up the brook. And there is something sending up the sun. It is this backward motion towards the source, against the stream, that most, that most we see ourselves in. The tribute of the current to the source. It is from this in nature we are from. It is most us. Today will be the day you said so. No, today will be the day you said the brook was called West Running Brook. Today we will, will be the day of what we both said. I like that poem a lot. It's an odd one. Yeah. The next poem that I wanted to read is going to be a bit shorter. It's called A Time to Talk. A time to talk. When a friend calls to me from the road and slows his horse to a meaning walk, I don't stand still and look around on all the hills I haven't hoed and shout from where I am, what is it? No, not as there in time to talk. I thrust my hoe in, in the mellow ground, blade up, blade end up and five feet tall and plod. I go up to the stone wall for a friendly visit. And the next poem that I'm going to read is called uh, The Flower Boat. It's somewhere in between. The Flower Boat. A fisherman swapping a yarn for a yarn under the hand of the village barber and here in the angle of house and barn, his deep sea dory has found a harbor. At anchor, she rides the sunny sod, as full to the gunwale of flowers growing, as ever she turned her home with cod from George's bank when winds were blowing. And I judge from that Elysian freight that all they ask is rougher weather and Dory and Master will sail by fate to seek for the Happy Isles together. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I think the final poem that I'm, re I'm going to read tonight is um, A Brook in the City. The farmhouse lingers, though averse to square. With the new city street, it has to wear a number in. But what about the brook that held the house as in an elbow crook? I ask as one who knew the brook, its strength and impulse having dipped a finger length and made it leap my knuckle having tossed a flower to try its currents where they crossed. 
the meadow grass could be cemented down from growing under the pavements of a town. The apple trees be sent to hearthstone flame. Is water wood to serve a brook the same? How else dispose of an immortal force no longer needed? Staunch it at its source. Staunch it at its source. With cinder loads dumped down, the brook was thrown. Deep in a sewer dungeon under stone, and fetid darkness still to live and run, and all for nothing it had ever done, except to except forget to go in fear, perhaps. No one would know except for ancient maps that such a brook ran water. But I wonder if from it its being kept forever under, the thoughts may not have risen that so keep this new belt city from both work and sleep. So thank you all for joining me here again tonight. I appreciate that. Um, as I said, I'm going to try to have that uh, video from Monday uh, re-recorded and published for Friday, God willing. Um, we try our best. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. May peace and blessings be on you and those you love. Good night.